Hi, I'm Richard Wright with Software Bisque, and I'm going to talk about T-Point on iOS. If you have the latest version of the Sky Mobile for the iPhone or the Sky HD for the iPad, it now includes T-Point if you connect to a Paramount using the Y-Sky board. This is really great for people who are using their Paramounts, also for visual observing. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is connect to the Paramount. I'm not going to go over setting up the Y-Sky board that's covered elsewhere. This is just going to be what's different with the newest version of the Sky for iOS and how T-Point integrates in with it. So we connected to the hotspot created by our Mighty in this example. And uh, just a couple of notes. First, I want to remind you that we should be direct connected to the mount. This isn't using the SkyX as a server. We're not using T-Point. Um, in the skybox or on a laptop or something. This is actually built into the iPad. So make sure uh, we've, we've selected a Paramount as our mount type and we'll connect uh, over the Wi-Fi connection just like we uh, normally do. The first thing you'll see that's changed when you first connect is you'll be asked if you want to use the reuse the pointing model. Now the reason this is uh, there is because if you have a pointing model that you already created and say, heaven forbid, the sky crashes, or perhaps you haven't moved the mount since the last time you used it, when you reconnect, you can use the, the same pointing model. You can keep adding points uh, to an existing pointing model uh, for up to 24 hours, but you can't just keep adding points uh, for days on end. Uh, after about 24 hours, it's going to force you to uh, either start a new model uh, if you don't want to use it. The very first time, of course, you connect to a Paramount, it's not going to ask you that because there's no model uh, present at all uh, on the device. Also, just a quick reminder, make sure your latitude and longitude are correct in the Sky uh, HD or the Sky Mobile. Either use location services on the device or make sure you've uh, put in the appropriate latitude and longitude. This is, of course, very important for pointing purposes uh, in any astronomical application. So in case you missed it, I did also click home when I first connected to the Paramount. I've slowed this portion of the video down just a little bit so that I have more time to talk while it ran. It normally doesn't take quite so long to home the Paramount. Also notice the slew buttons are no longer part of the main sky chart. They're now consolidated here on this little pop-up view. It turns out the buttons on the sky chart were um, less of a great user experience than first uh, envisioned. So now they're here consolidated on this control panel and uh, you're less likely to accidentally touch them or touch something else when you're trying to uh, use them. So the mount's finished homing and I'm going to select my first uh, alignment star. You can pick any star that you know what the star is. Pick a bright star uh, that you know the name of. Uh, Sirius is pretty easy to uh, to spot. Uh, it's also easy to center up in the eyepiece if it's a little out of, if it's a little out of uh, the field of view. Sometimes you can sort of see the glare from one side. So. Uh, a bright target is a really good uh, first target. I sped up the animation a little bit here so the scope is on Sirius and what you'll do is you look through the eyepiece and you try to center the star up in the eyepiece. Now you can bring up the control panel again and use those buttons that are built in. Personally I really like to use the hand paddle. I find the uh, the, the tactile feedback from that joystick uh, is very intuitive and you don't have to look down uh, at what you're doing. So it, it, I find that to be one of the easiest ways to center up the star. Just center it as best you can. I would, I would use a low power eyepiece uh, to begin with. If you have an illuminated reticle, that's, well, that's super great, but you don't really need to obsess that much accuracy. Uh, it's not like we're trying to do 20 minute unguided uh, images or something. Now if you're watching the iOS device while you're centering up the star, you're going to see that little green crosshair dancing around the star. And that's just because uh, the green crosshair is where the computer thinks the mount is pointing. And what you're going to do is you're going to reconcile where the mount thinks it, it is pointing to where the mount actually is pointing. And of course we do that by centering it directly on a star, uh, which has a known right ascension and declination. It's also worth noting that on the very first star and the first star only, uh, since we no longer sync paramounts, if your tripod is nice and level, uh, you can actually make mount adjustments uh, to help get close to the star. So if you slew to Sirius and you're way off to the left or, or way low than Sirius, go ahead and make some mount adjustments uh, to get Sirius uh, closer to 
the field of view and then use the hand paddle to center it up the rest of the way. Now only do that on the very first sample. You can't do that anymore. Once you've added the first sample, we don't want to move the mount uh, any at all for T-Point to be able to do its magic. So now that we have our first star centered in the eyepiece, let's add it as our pointing sample. Now in this case we have Sirius selected as the current target and it's important to have an object selected because when you add the pointing sample it's going to use the currently selected object. If for some reason the object isn't selected then an, an error message will be displayed saying no object is selected. So Sirius is selected, it's centered in our eyepiece. We're going to click on the add button in the upper right hand uh, corner of the app and it's going to ask us to confirm add pointing sample using Sirius. So this is a little bit of a sanity check. If it said Venus right there and you're pointing at Sirius, you should definitely uh, say no. Uh, once you've added the sample, if all goes well, it'll pop up a success and it'll tell you how many samples are now in your pointing model. And you've added your first sample uh, to T-Point. Now it's very nice because the only one sample to T-Point will immediately improve the pointing uh, of the Paramount. So now let's add another sample. Now I recommend picking samples that are near each other initially. If you're not real good at your initial alignment, then pointing will be very good in the initial area once you get your first star added, but the further away you get, uh, the, the less accurate the pointing may be. And you can mitigate this by at slowly building up the model as you go out further and further from where you started. So let's just add a couple of stars here in Orion, and as we work our way out, uh, things begin to get much better. Every pointing sample you add to T-Point from here on out will noticeably improve the pointing accuracy of the mount. So we can start by adding samples uh, here where we are. We can casually add samples as we're doing visual observing throughout the night. Just every time you go to a new object, uh, add, a, add, a, add a, pointing, a star nearby, or if the object is well defined and you can center the object, uh, you can also add that. So after just a few points in the, this part of the sky, I can select, I can search for M42, that is, and slew to it, and M42 should be right definitely in my field of view, even if I have a very poor uh, polar alignment to get started with. So again, if you're not real great at your initial polar alignment and the mount is uh, perhaps not well aligned, then a good strategy uh, for the first few T-point samples is to work your way around uh, say a single constellation, uh, go from star to star. Every time you add a new T-point sample, uh, that goes into the model and that helps uh, the computer figure out how badly misaligned the mount is and it'll start to accommodate for that very quickly. Uh, after just a few samples you'll find that you can go further and further away and the pointing is still very good. Uh, when you cross the meridian to go to the other side, uh, sometimes uh, if there's a bit of a misalignment or maybe the, your OTA is, is not perfectly parallel with the Versa plate on the mount, uh, you may also have to fish around to find the first star on the other side. But once you add another star on the other side of the meridian, uh, again, uh, T-Point's pretty smart and the accuracy of the pointing will start going up very quickly. So of course feel free to add as many points as you want throughout the night. If your mount is well polar aligned, you certainly don't need more than, say, uh, three samples on either side of the meridian to give you excellent pointing performance, uh, unlike anyone else uh, is able to get with a, with a visual system. Um, I should also mention that you can, you can use planets. Uh, we do know there are a deck of, of planets, so you could use Venus, Mars, uh, and so forth, uh, for example, as, as pointing samples. You could even use the moon. Uh, or the sun. Uh, make sure the moon is well centered in your eyepiece. That may be tricky uh, given the, uh, the current magnification. And of course the usual warnings about pointing to the sun. Uh, this is maybe for a solar scope uh, or one that's properly filtered. I don't want to hear any stories about people uh, burning their eyeballs out because they pointed at the sun during the day with an optical uh, scope that wasn't well, um, wasn't well shielded for that sort of thing. Finally, I should mention that ProTrack is actually enabled by default uh, with T-Point for iOS. So if you're, uh, if you're a visual observer and you notice sometimes if your alignment is bad, uh, you may get good pointing, but the object drifts out of the eyepiece in a short amount of time. This, this can especially be problematic when you're doing outreach and you've got a line of people looking at an object. 
Well, Protract uh, will, 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 will kick in uh, with as few as six points and will keep the object in the, in the eyepiece a good deal longer than uh, it might have otherwise. If you add a lot of points, if you got crazy, it's even possible that you could do some imaging. You could add T points uh, visually uh, with a DSLR by looking through it or do it visually and then put a DSLR on and perhaps do uh, some unguided uh, DSLR imaging with just an intervalometer. I certainly wouldn't ta try you know, 15 or 20 minute exposures, you know, at a thousand millimeter focal length sort of thing, uh, but I think it will, um, it, it would make certain types of uh, DSLR type imaging a little bit more feasible without requiring that you bring a laptop along. And so that's it. T-Point is built into the Sky for iOS and is enabled automatically for Paramount owners and is available now on the iTunes App Store. All you need is a Y-Sky Wi-Fi board to connect to the Paramount and you have a great iOS-based hand controller that offers unparalleled pointing and tracking performance, not just for imagers, but now also for visual observing as well.